Hey everyone, this is Friedel Hacker Asia Raven, and I'm here with special guest Elliot Kennerson. Yeah, he's back. <laughs> we are doing things a bit differently in this uh, episode. We we both watched uh, the episode all the way until the runway, so we'll go over all of the stuff that happened before the runway, and then we'll react to the runway, the judges' critiques, and the lip sync together. Okay. And we all, and we both have our notes in front of us. So let's begin. The first thing that we'll talk about is the queens coming back. I am angry. The judges are and not And Denali is not happy. Like Denali is like, why the heck am I safe? This was the best look on the runway. What's it going to take for me to win? Like, I, I, could, I could understand where she was coming from. I mean, Denali is the type of performer who... You know, she's like, look, I'm ticking all the boxes. Why am I not the star? You know, and I think, like, it's not that there's something, like, glaringly wrong with Denali. It's just mm. this, like, it's just, it's sort of like a failure to thrive or something. You know, people look look at her and, and it's just like, I mean, what did Candy say? Candy was like, meh, you know. Yeah, forgettable. Like and so and, clean. Yeah, yeah. And, and Denali took that seriously. Like, they, it was supposed to be a read, but she took it seriously. Denali is the kind of queen, like, as you said, she ticks all the boxes. There's nothing necessarily wrong with her, but she's just, in my opinion, she's missing that oomph factor. Like, the, the, the one special ingredient that makes a winner. Like, I think that's yeah. what she's missing. She reminds me of so many prima donna type people that I knew from my, like, own personal theater days, like when I used to be in the theater and be an actor and stuff like that, you know, and especially there was that part when they were doing, <laughs> when they were doing the, the choreography last week and, and mm -hmm. Donnelly was like, okay, we're gonna do a side kick and a kick. So is it, a, and she's like, is it a side kick like this? Or is it a side kick like this? Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, oh girl. And Utica is, I guess, going to stand up for herself now, which right? you know what, good for her because Utica is like I'm I'm being way too kind to the rest of the queens and they're overshadowing me so I need to step up which you know yeah. what good for her because I like Utica even though the judges don't get her I like her she's a fan favorite let's see how far she'll go she goes she might end up being in the top four I don't see her winning though I don't mm, uh, I She's got a lot of work to do if she's going to win. But, I mean, I think the thing she's really honing in on is, like, I let that part that I wanted to do in the last one slip away from me. And yeah. I'm done with I'm done with that. You know, she's probably like, I'm done with, with just going along. Probably is like, I'm done helping bitches sew their stuff. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. This is not RuPaul's best friend's race. <laughs> I mean, it, it's always so weird that, I mean, you know that you are entering a competition. Shouldn't you have such a mindset from the beginning? Like, why is it taking you eight episodes to come to such a conclusion? The theme of this season to me, coming to this point, is secrets. <laughs> it's like secret weapons is what's winning. This. It's, it's going to win this, you know, and we're seeing that with Olivia. Um, we're seeing that with anyone who's kind of like, not talking that game of like, oh, I'm so good at this, or this is my thing, mm -hmm. but it's showing us instead. I feel like Elliot with two T's is yeah, uh, one of those. It's a, he's a threat. No one took him seriously, but Elliot is a threat. You don't want to lip sync against him. No. Yeah. Like, it was good. It was very, very good. You know that Elliot used to teach at Alyssa's dance school, right? Oh. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. So I feel okay. like we're gonna at some point in this season we're gonna get some tea on Alyssa. For some reason, the drag queens aren't necessarily taking over Netflix. Like Alyssa had that docu series on Netflix. RuPaul had AJ and the Queen. <laughs> like you would think, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't watch the entire thing, AJ and the Queen. Like you would think that the drag queens would conquer Netflix, but no. You take them out of the element of of RuPaul's Drag Race, which is essentially a variety show, besides being a competition <laughs> show. And uh, the stuff just doesn't land. It just really yeah. doesn't land. And, it's not working. It's not that working. AJ show, which was RuPaul's platform for like preaching oh. like RuPaul's oh. philosophy, which I like RuPaul's philosophy. I listened to RuPaul read his book. Uh, 
I, I found it very inspiring. I was reading it like on a vacation in Greece, just sitting just like this with my headphones in the sun, listening to RuPaul tell me how wonderful RuPaul. I am. And it was great, you know. Mm. But yeah, they don't they don't transplant well. They don't they don't uh, speaking of failure to thrive. <laughs> Uh, okay, so RuPaul enters the workroom, and the main challenge is the social media inspired rusical, where the queens have to portray different social media platforms. There's TikTok, there's LinkedIn, there's Facebook, but of course, the names have been changed. Now, during uh, the portion where they were deciding uh, which roles they wanted to uh, do, uh, to Love take, I laughed out loud they each when the queen played Denali and Rose audition. And then we decide which one we think I was like, <laughs> that was good. I enjoyed it. And that was Elliot's it. idea. I'm starting to think that Elliot might be a plant. Like Elliot might be like a producer's like a plant. Producer. Because what, what kind of suggestion was that? Like. Make them audition for each other. I'm actually, I'm actually surprised that none of the queens have done this before. Uh, I, well, you know how um, Tina says, "Oh, I voted for, I voted for Rose." I mean, I voted yeah. for um, for Denali just uh, to mess with Rose. Said that's exactly what you should be doing in this competition. Like, yeah. you should you should totally be undercutting people's idea of who they are. That's how you win. Is you rattle Wait, people's it's confidence. It's a competition. It's a competition. Yeah. And you want to, if you're not a front runner in the competition, or if there are no obvious front runners, then um, chaos is kind of your friend to me. <laughs> like if, if someone like, if that's like, okay, we're putting Rose on a platform or like letting Rose have this moment to shine and do this mm -hmm. audition. But that means like Rose's stock goes up and you just don't want the other people's stock to go up. So you need mm -hmm. to, you need to undercut it. Um, and this is when I realized too, that this is going to be the Denali episode, right? Because Denali is forced to have this realization about who she might be as a performer. Mm -hmm. And I've seen this myself in the, in the theatrical thing, like when someone who considers himself a lead, like, like kind of hits gold on being like a character, character role, a small role that shines, mm -hmm. that could, that's like a real revelation for a performer. So I feel like that's Denali's leap to make. Anne Hathaway. <laughs> We're gonna talk about Anne Hathaway, yeah. yeah. And Hathaway made her famous. I actually thought it was supposed, it was going to be oh recorded, but no, she was there. She was talking to them live, which I appreciated. She took the time out of her schedule to do this, which, okay. And yeah, there were some fun questions. It was, it was just fun to see Anne Hathaway interacting with the rest of the queens and actually telling Denali that she should continue working hard because apparently Anne Hathaway was the ninth choice when uh, in the Devil's Wear Prada movie, which I didn't know. Yeah, I mean, how would you know that? I wonder who the first eight were. Like, eight, seriously, eight, eight, eight. <laughs> she came on. He goes. He goes. Oh, the world's most boring actress. <laughs> yeah, there, there, is a, there, there is a PR thing with Anne Hathaway. Like, there's something there. Like, people don't necessarily they like her, but they also don't like her. Like, it's weird. She's it's a, a weird touch, thing. She's a flashpoint of an of an actress. I. I like don't love her, but I love so many of the things that she's been in. But somehow mm -hmm. I never like mm -hmm. love her in them, but I love the movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. The exception being Les Mis, yeah. which was the reverse. I hated Les Mis, but I loved <laughs> her in Les Mis. You need Anne Hathaway plus something. Plus something else, yeah. But it, it, yeah. Raises, it raises where you're, your starting point somehow. I don't know, it's hard. I, I used to think like, is she a real person because you know, because you know her name, her, I don't know, is that her real name? Like who the fuck is Anne Hathaway? Like her name is the name of, of Shakespeare's wife. Do you know that? Like, like yeah, yeah, Shakespeare's wife is named yeah. Anne Hathaway. And I'm like, did she pick that name for that reason? Is that something we're supposed to read? Like she's not, a, who is Anne Hathaway? I don't know, but you know what I mean? Yeah, she seems kind of mysterious. Anne, yeah, the Anne Hathaway we see, Right, as in this video, in the in the in the live video, like is she the real Anne Hathaway or is Anne Hathaway some side, sort of character that she's putting in front of the camera? Like, what's going on? <laughs> Anne Hathaway is like a corporation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she's like Shamu. There's like there's like a new Shamu every 
10 years. I just want to say about this interaction too that like, that like once again God displays absolute the incredible the like you emotional the and sort of strategic <laughs> intelligence by like mm. by like using the the gravitas of having this big star there to her advantage by using it to bolster her the person who will be her partner in this yeah Denali yeah yeah be- and that's exactly the reason although they don't say it I wish they did why would you vote so Godmik is the only other one who voted for Denali to do the mm-hmm. other role, even though, so she knew, so, so, um, Gottmik knew that, that Denali was going to lose this vote, but nonetheless voted for Denali to bolster her confidence because they're going to be partners and very much depend yeah. on each other. It's a yeah. very, inc- very clever I, strategic move. Maybe it's like a smart cookie. Like she, like Gottmik is incredibly smart. Really? They appreciate, yeah, they appreciate Gottmik, but I think their favorites are like Simone, they want a winner that's like Simone or Tina. I don't think that they see Gottmik as the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race season 13. It would be a game changer, that, you know, the first trans man doing it. Mm-hmm. I mean, if Gottmik were, you know, Gottmik is, if, if you can say that a person like represents a whole group like that, Gottmik is doing a hell of a job representing yeah. who, she, mm-hmm. who she is as a drag queen mm-hmm. and who he is as a man, you know, yeah. like just doing a bang up job of representing and, and I Gothmik mean, not trying is, to, but just being in, awesome. In my opinion, Gottmik is basically like in control of his own narrative on this show. Excellent point. Like, like he is controlling how the camera is supposed to portray him on this show. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's an amazing skill to have if you're, if you're like competing in a reality show. Okay. So then everyone had to come and they had to record their vocals. Michelle Visage was there. And yeah, Simone isn't a singer. A lot of the, these queens aren't singers. Utica isn't a singer. But then again, Utica, in my opinion, Utica had the most difficult lines. Oh. Like those lyrics were difficult. Very difficult. Yeah. You know what they call that, like, um, uh, that type of song where you're like, is like a uh, very uh, <laughs> typical of um, like Gilbert and Sullivan musicals, you know, which are mm-hmm. those British yeah. musicals. Um, and they call that a patter, you know, they call it a patter song and it's a patter roll if, if you have that. And it's a very specific skill. Uh, and then we come to the choreography with Jamal and... Uh, it was okay. The choreography, like Simone, isn't a dancer either. I guess. Karen, also, I just want to talk about Jamal for a moment. Caught up of all of the that we lose kind of the face um, we occasional lose the players just of the Paul averse, I fucking love Jamal. He is this. He is so hot to me. I can't. I'm like, mm-hmm. can we have more Jamal? And he's giving you this. He's giving yeah. you <laughs> wild cat tattoo. I'm just sitting there going like. <laughs> I love Jamal. I'm watching this with my partner. He's like, okay, okay, we know you love Jamal. I mean, Jamal, when he choreographs the queens, you can see that he really cares. He wants them to succeed. He'll change up the steps if they don't, like, if they aren't able to do them. And he's patient. Like, if you can make Utica dance, then you you have a skill. The queens yeah. are in the workroom. They're getting ready. And we have this conversation about social media. And I've, and the queens are like, yeah, we have been canceled. I mean, social media is a double-edged sword. Like you can you can go to sleep, and when you wake up, you surprise, you're being canceled online for something for a tweet you made ten years ago. I'm so <laughs> glad that that is not. This is not my life. I mean, you know, I but but it's true. These people, you know, like uh, like Candy says, like. You, these people live and die by this, you know? This is this is how careers are made and unmade. And then as these uh, queens are talking, they also they talk about Tina, Tina Burner being an ex-boyfriend of uh, Graham Norton, which it took them long enough to bring that up. <laughs> I didn't know, I mean, I didn't know about that. I don't follow the life of Graham Norton. However, I'm glad it was Graham Norton because Graham Norton is, I think he's pretty hot actually, you know? Because I think Gottmik was like it was a fling, but Tina was like, no, it wasn't a fling. It was a it was a relationship, and I was like, maybe it was in your mind. 
But I didn't know that thing about uh so you know the 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 viral meme that was Candy's thing where she's sitting there in the club being like, yeah. Oh god. <laughs> Alone in the VIP. I, I yeah. knew that meme, but I didn't know that it was Candy until I watched this show. So it's sort of interesting. It's like is like the fame it's sort of like the yes, the fame there belongs to Candy, but also Candy wasn't someone I recognized. It was more like I recognized this thing, this creation of social media that mm-hmm. went around, you know. That yeah, was that yeah. happened like to the, the meme. Yeah, the meme was bigger than Candy. I'm starting to get a real soft spot for Candy. I love the way she owns the lisp. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I love the way she doesn't let it hold her back. It's up to us to understand her. That's a really powerful thing to have accomplished. Yeah, Candy, Candy is like, her. yeah, Candy is like, I know people don't understand me, but you know what? That's a you problem, not a me problem. <laughs> yeah. So we have the rusical, the social media, the unverified rusical. And Tina comes in and Tina is giving us this cabaret realness. Like, what did you think of Tina? Tina's performance. She's giving you the full Liza. I mean, we're, she's doing just as well in this as she did in the disco mentory. You know, Tina is an MC. I mean, I believe that is what she does. Then we have Olivia. She's basically Mark Zuckerberg. And I'm calling it. And Olivia was okay. Like, she can sing. We know that, but she was okay. I don't think she, I think she's going to get read in the um, critique for what she's wearing in this. I know it's like, yeah. I know it's like, oh, it looks like a, you know, it's Mark Zuckerberg as college student, fine. But um, too, too plain. I mean, she should have worn at least like a college jersey or, or something, you know, should have been like a, a slutty drag version of Mark Zuckerberg, not just yeah, yeah. Plain. She could have, she could have dragged it up, like it was way too simple. She could have dragged it up. She should have dragged it up. It's a, it's a, it's a musical performance. Yeah, should be read for it. And you know, also the shirt was a terrible choice because later, late in the performance, she starts to sweat, and we are seeing drips. <laughs> then we have Rose, who is basically Mark Zuckerberg's friend, I guess. Yeah, what is Rosé in this? I mean, the, the, the musical itself was excessively complex, I feel. But um, I couldn't really follow. I mean, I got the point that it was it was this type of musical where, yeah, there's, you know, they, they reference guess, Chicago. Yeah, I got the rest of the characters, but I couldn't place Rosé. But what was Rosé supposed to be? At first, I thought she was the character who was trying to, like, steal Facebook away from Olivia or something. But I was yeah. like, what's Rosé? What's Rosé? But then I found out that Rosé was supposed to portray being sex positive on social media and being body shamed or something. I was like, okay, it's confusing. Where was uh, Grinder, by the way? <laughs> I, I was mean, like, who's going to be Grinder? Rosé could have been Grinder. Rosé would have like been Rose, Ro- Rosé should have been Grinder or OnlyFans or something like that if you wanted to be more sex positive and stuff. I liked, uh, I was actually impressed by Utica being able to say her lines. I liked that. Uh, I also liked the Russian bots. I liked Gottmik. When Gottmik and Denali came in, I was like, oh, oh, I'm enjoying this. Because in my opinion, Simone was bad. Candy was bad and they kind of dragged the performance down. But then mm-hmm. the Russian bots came in and the performance like picked up an energy again. I like I that. Agree. And this is Denali's mm-hmm. story. This is like Denali. Denali is not very bright. So let's just say that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Gottmik is super bright. Bright enough to know mm-hmm. she's not going to shine in a classic way. She's not going to shine as a singer or a dancer in this uh, uh, musical. So she picks a strong partner who is strong in those mm-hmm. things. As mm-hmm. we've already said, ballasts her confidence mm-hmm. and then kind of rises to her, her level. And um, I agree. I think that they, they were the showstoppers. I mean, I, I think yeah. they had, and this is where Denali realizes, hey, maybe it's not always all about being the best singer, dancer, actor, being the best triple threat. It's about using your skills in this like directed way, you know, having good allies and, and shining that way. My favorite was Elliot. 
I think Elliot destroyed it. The yeah. dancing was perfect. It was a perfect um, weird thing for Elliot with his weird rancid personality to do. His look was perfect. Perfect Billie Eilish, you know, Gen Z coming up was, that was yeah, so Yeah, making point. TikTok, yeah. Oh. And it's, and TikTok is like that, of course. It's like super weird and a little hard to read and like, and with the flashlights dancing with the flashlight. And then, and, and that was, then we understood that that was like, supposed to be like kids doing it in the dark in their room. At, yeah. At, well, no. Simone fell down big time. Simone is going to be um, red like for filth for wearing those sunglasses and not it, it, for, you know, having the weaknesses in, in the dancing and the singing and then not using her asset face is one face. of them uh, by covering it with those glasses. She's just hiding and the wig Hiding mm-hmm. from the judges. Okay, Tina so Tina Burner is giving well, us what? Sexy cab. <laughs> She's giving you more <laughs> New York public utility realness. Personally, I don't think that, I don't like when queens hear yellow and they automatically think taxi. Like, give me something different. Uh, Olivia is giving us, she yeah, eleganza. Yellow fever. <laughs> I'm giving an elevated evening. Eleganza. I think this look saved Olivia. It, it might have saved her from the bottom. I don't like the neckline. Yeah. Actually, I really don't like the neckline. Yeah, the neckline is weird. It's a weird slit. And I wish like, it had been just a straight thing. Oh, mm-hmm. Simone. Oh. oh. Simone, Simone, yet. Rue, I think okay. <laughs> I look okay. Like I like and a lot about this. I really don't like All the right. wig, though. And honey, I'm yeah, that's what you. I'm gonna say. Like, I like the look, but the wig could have been different. I mean, the color is great with her skin. Oh, Utica. <gasps> oh. You, Utica Wait, always does something that? different. She looks like she you can always count on Utica to do something different. Yeller. Yeah. <laughs> Medieval She's giving you my medieval dangerous liaisons like this gown is princess Padme fucking <laughs> quilted realness. Love it. Oh, it's great. It's beautiful. Oh wow. Okay, Beyonce. <laughs> Show us your two lips. This look oh, yeah, that's just a, yeah. yeah. It's just a, a mountain of pleats and folds and stuff walking around. I think it moves very well. Is she barefoot? No, she's Baby, in like. A, I feel. I don't know. Yeah. She don't just. It's way too much clothing she, for my life. Like, how the heck is she going to dance in it if she if she's asked to dance? Oh no! A oh, second taxi cab. They must have yeah, been that, taxi. Yeah, that's what I'm like. I don't I like it when queens yellow, hear yellow and, and they immediately think Spanish. taxi cab. Like, give me a banana. Give me a mango. So Give whose taxi cam. cabs you like better? Elliot. In my opinion, Elliot won. Oh. Smoking. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. look wow. Is a tribute to oh, Jim Carrey. Uh, the, the mask. mask. Oh, the mask. Yeah, this was very different. Boot. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. It's like Alphaba taxi cab New York again. Yeah, like, right? yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't look like a mask. Denali. Ooh. That girl is poison. Michelle, do you think okay, that Denali. Bob restricts her? She's giving she's you like case. Medusa. <laughs> I am yeah, serving. Princess Price on realness. She said. Hmm. Body illusion. It's her face Up looks stunning. Okay, I think Denali's gonna win. Piece. We are all. I hope she the- wins. She she deserves a win. Just give her a win. You can send her. Oh, okay, God, oh Nick. We have seen this before. We have seen this before. <laughs> you think so? The robot? Was it, was it Denali wearing something similar as a test yeah, dummy? Yeah, there was that futuristic I... thing. Oh, maybe so. I don't remember. I would have to look. It just seemed like you were Yeah, like, like you said, that down, Simone sorry. was hiding. And yeah, and the judges picked up on is... that, that you were hiding. You were literally hiding your face and everything. Oh, they think she time. killed it? Sounded oh. great. Looked great. Yeah, Mario I'm surprised. Great. I'm just, they're just, like, we loved you during the rubicle, which okay. I I was confused. Like what kind of character was she supposed to be playing? I have no idea. Ready to choreograph my whole life now. That's what I think. I, too. Jamal <laughs> I want Jamal to choreograph my life. <laughs> I love Jamal. I want a Jamal t-shirt. The thing about Tina that I keep seeing that keeps coming to mind is like 
just the, what I'm you're constantly reminded of is that she's a live drag host in New York City. And I think that like the looks that she's giving you, her public utility realness, <laughs> firemen and taxis and police and McDonald's and, and, McDonald's. and, McDonald's and, <laughs> and like public transit. She's giving you Metro, you know, she's giving you New York subway. Like that's, that's just for the tourists, you know? That's mm -hmm. shit's for the tourists coming to New York City, going to a drag show in New York City. Big drag show. Who comes out? A person in a dress like a fucking New York taxi cab. Of course, you know. But like here, you know, I'm like, you know, that's for that's like for the tourists. She's 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 for the tourists. It's a low brow. She's a low brow queen as far as I'm concerned. Like with the yeah. chops and all that. Um and so much about referencing the visuals of New York City at least the, mm -hmm. such as are in the tourist brochure. I think she's a little cheap in that way, in spite of the fact that she's obviously strong. She has the courage. She has the stamina. She's a workhorse. But like, I've seen enough. I mean, I'm not against being like showcasing taxis and subway and whatnot. Like you can do a taxi outfit. Like Elliot did the same thing, but Elliot's was better compared to Tina's. Like if Tina is going to give us this firefighter, a taxi, McDonald's, subway, whatnot, then elevate it because you are on an international stage. Like take it yeah. further, make it, make it something unique. One of the reasons it's more interesting with Elliot is that it's not something Elliot would do. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, a taxi is something, a taxi themed, you know, uh, neoprene or what is that material? Plastic gown is something I would expect Tina to do. So where's the thing that I'm not expecting Tina to do? I think that the, the another theme of this week is echo, 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 because we've seen a lot of sort of repeats. You know, we've seen the Queens doing the same things, Thanks. oddly, yeah. like separated by weeks, not in this case, but we've seen like three instances of people like essentially yep. in the same outfit. Simone and Olivia's boxer outfit. Yep. Simone, uh, Olivia and Candy's wig was the same. And now we have uh, Gottmik uh, being the same test dummy that Denali did earlier. Yeah. In the, like, what's what happening? Where are, going where, on? Are concepts? where are the concepts? It's unclear how much Tina understands about how her own shtick is coming across Cross, like, yeah does she think she's impressing us like if she does mm, <laughs> she needs to let us know that that it's a shtick and she gets it like, mm -hmm. like i wish she was like i am the new york city queen i am walking talk in new york i you know i am the subway i am the taxi <laughs> like <laughs> i am the fire department <laughs> fdny baby you know yeah yeah i wish she was doing that Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Wait, I predicted this. Simone. This is what Andy. I predicted. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, my dear. So proud. <laughs> I wonder if I wonder if Simone's a good lip syncer. Ah. I mean, this could be an excuse to send Candy home. Simone, that look is so cool. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of giving you fireman realness also. Heavy <laughs> day. Like Tina can do her stuff too, but elevate it. Tina doesn't elevate her concepts. Looks yeah, like the dress Candy is too much. Like the dress the is too much for Candy. Candy's kind of flopping. Yeah, like, as I said, like, the dress is too much. She can't handle it. <laughs> uh, Candy, you got something stuck here. I feel so bad for Candy. She looks like a mess in front of Simone. Is it going to be a double save? I hope not. Like we are in episode number eight and there's still a lot of queens left. <sighs> Who's gonna be? I mean, Simone isn't going home. Simone is not going home. You're right. That's for sure. I mean, not a surprise. Not a surprise. It wasn't surprising, predictable. Oh. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with the decision. <laughs> Oh <laughs> I am getting a little... Oh, come on! <laughs> not, not because I'm sad that she's leaving, exactly. Candy, candy, wait. Oh, wait, what? Something's happening. What's going on? You better not. <gasps> not ready better. for you to go. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Tina. 
Double save. This is so produced. This is so rigged, rigged. That was not a double save performance. Actually, I think that was spontaneous. I think, I think that the producers in the room right now are like, the fuck is Rue doing? <laughs> They're thinking, we got to get rid of these girls. Do you think this season's going to go on forever? Yeah, episode eight and so many... Qu- Oh. oh, here we go. But they're going to have to do a double elimination to catch up. That what, that's what I'm thinking. That, okay, so you save two queens now. So you're going to eliminate two queens in the next episode? I think they will. I think like, they have to. Wow. Yeah, that was it. That was the episode. This was me, Friedel Huck, with our special guest, Elliot Kenderson. And yeah, we'll see you guys. You know what? I'm excited for the Snatch game. Let's see what these queens do. And hopefully we'll get a double elimination because these queens need to, RuPaul needs to let these queens go.